We're going to go through the supplies needed for our summer garden necklace and um, the tools. So, and then what's in your kit. So let's first talk about what you get in your kit and what these things are for. You will have a bag of beads and it'll be either in the green selection or the purple selection. You will have E6000, Fireline, a Q-tip. Then you will have your flex wire, your wire guards, and your crimp bead covers and your crimp beads. You will have the link to the class. Obviously, you're watching this. Um, some sandpaper and a Q-tip, extra one in there. And then your pre-cuts. Um, a template if you want to make future projects with this or want those bead designs and your pastels. Let's first start with the pastels. The pastels I use are new pastels and I simply they're new pastels by Prismacolor and I just what I did for when you open that up you'll see it's, see it's a piece of sandpaper and your pastels have been rubbed off on those so that you have the right colors. Then you're going to need a heat gun and I recommend a box for containing your beads when you're heating flat ones. A little cardboard box or a little wooden box is best. So heat gun, craft heat gun. And then the Shrinkets White Dome to Mold. Mine looks pink because, and the glide pin is rolled around there somewhere. There it is. Mine looks pink because it's dirty and needs washing. You can wash these with soap and water. Then the tools you're going to need. You're going to need a plier set just to open and close jump rings. And then a nice crimping plier because we're going to be using flexware and crimp beads and crimp bead covers. This brand is Omtera, O-M-T-A-R-A, -A, that's O-M, then the next word is Tara, T-A-R-A, -A. and I really like her um, woman-owned company, her um, crimping pliers. Then something to cut your flex steel flex wire with. Uh, I recommend always having some workable fixative. I'm going to show you how to spray seal the beads. This is optional. You will not need to do that because we're going to really rub the pastel deep into the um, shrink plastic and the tooth of it, and then it's going to shrink down and embed. And I've not sealed it and washed it in water to see if it holds, and it does hold. But workable fixatives are always nice to have, so I'm going to show you that you can seal them that way. Um, you're going to need a beading needle. And most of you will have that. I have. I like this size 10. So we're going to use it size 10. And then we're going to be tying knots with the, the fire line. And we're going to be using surgeon knots. This is optional. If you like to be really careful with your knots, have something to drop on them. And the thing I like is super new glue to seal my knots with. Um, I think... That should cover it. So let's go on. Oh, forgot a Sharpie. And then I'm going to show you how to use Deco um, paint markers. This is oil glossy um, paint marker. You can just have Sharpies just fine for what we're going to do. We're going to use it to add the little details here on the beads. But I want to show you this wonderful gloss finish that you can achieve with the deco color. It cleans up with paint thinner, so if you're a little paint, if you want to apply it with a paintbrush, you can. Um, you can apply it directly with the pen, but cleanup is with paint thinner. Oh, I didn't have the lid on this properly. So I always have a little paint thinner in my studio. Okay, let's now get started.
So the first thing we're going to do is color our beads and with pastels. And um, I'm going to do the purple set first. I've got the green set over here. So I'm going to this is this will be your if you've got the purple kit you'll have an envelope with your purple pastels in it i'm going to set aside the beads that will not be colored these we're going to shrink just the way they are in their cream color so set those aside so they don't get pastels on them these are going to be done with the marker and just dots Okay, these are these are just going to be shrunk the way they are, the little black ones, so set those aside. So the ones we're going to be coloring are the daisy ones, and these will be shrunk flat, the spacer bead ones, the scalloped round, and these smaller, um, just rounded petal, and then just a hint of color on the little ones here. So, we're going to be matching up the colors in our beads here. So, I'm going to lay the beads out, the purple kit, however you're comfortable. I'm going to pour them out like this. If you want to put them in a bowl like this, or if you actually want to spread them out, Go right ahead and do that. Um, we're going to be matching up this thistle color. Going a little, um, it's it's a kind of a brownish uh, medium, a, a kind of a warm purple. And I'm going to do the big scalloped beads with that color. And I'm on the frosted side. So I'm going to open my kit up and bring out my pastels. And then there they are, and they match this set here. So we're gonna be matching that color. So I've put a, a just a great regular old purple there. This one's a, 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 a really gray clay purple color. And it almost looks perfectly like it goes with that, but I do want these a little cooler. So I'm going to mix, and then this warmer purple over here, I'm going to mix all of these together. And then I'm just rubbing it on. And I'm really close to that color, as you can see. But I think I'd like a little more purple in there. And I could add some of this gray to that mix. Let's see what happens if we do that. Yummy. Okay, I'm really going to rub that in. And there we are. Okay, so we're gonna set those aside. And I'm getting a new piece of uh, paper towel. And I'm going for the, where did it go? It's under my table, oh, there it is. I'm going to next do the scallop bead here. And on this particular one, I picked this, um, I picked color in between these two, but I'm gonna pick more coral for this on the scallop bead. I want that to go really coral. I wanna really match up that bead. So I'm on the frosted side. Whoops, shiny side on that one. Pastels don't adhere to the shiny. And I really rub in to my surface. 
so it really gets in um, to the to the uh, sanded surface. I think I've. There, I'm bringing some of that pink in there. Okay, so I've got this coral color. Okay, it's not that yellow color, it's a coral color. Okay, then next I'm going to do these two beads and I'm going to match them up kind of in this yellow range. It's the light yellow. And I think I'm going to come in with the coral and highlight the center. See how pretty that looks. Oops, I got some purple on that one. If you get a little um, other color on there, just rub it in. It'll look good. Just very artsy. Okay, so we've got these three colors and they're going to go with our beads. Now for these little guys. Get them on the frosted side and let's do a hint of purple on the centers of these. to make sure that well, that one's not wanting to take the pastel really well but yeah oh there okay there got to remember even if it's subtle it does shrink down double in size and we just want a little halo there and I've done an extra one we only are going to use four I've done an extra one just I think your kits may have extra ones in them so there's our little purple colors Okay, so now I'm going to clean this up and we're going to go on to the green. Okay, we're ready to do the green. I'm opening up my green kit. There's my colors. And I'm going to find my beads, lay them out. Okay, we will take these. We want to keep these plain, the round disc. We're going to color these green. We're going to color these, the coral. We're going to put black and white dots on these. We're going to color these kind of a yellowish. These will be left black and our little uh, beads here will have a little hint of yellow or peach in them, or coral in them. So, first thing we're going to do is our disc beads, our scalloped round beads, and we're going to match that color. And I'm going to go through this. We know it's not totally aqua, it's not totally blue, and it's not totally green, but it seems to have all those colors in it. So, Let's mix them together until we start to see that color appear. Yay! Doesn't take much.
And there we have our green. Now we're going to do the daisies. And the daisies um, I'm going to do in the coral color. So I'm coming over here, mixing these together until I see that color appear. Whoops, do it on the flat side. And there we are. Pretty good to me. And now the um, flip this over. Pestles are really messy. Wipe my finger off. And now I'm going in for a yellow, yellowy bead, yellowy pinky bead. Well, not a yellowy pinky. He's, he's this little melon color. a nice melon color and now for the little hints of color on these guys put them on their, the sides where they're frosted and you may have an extra in your kit and if you do go ahead and make it and we're going to doesn't matter we could do them green we could do them any color here I'll just grab what color is available they'd be cute any, any color, if you want to highlight them with the green, we're just doing them with kind of the leftover pastels. There, and so our green set is ready to go. Okay, and that's how you use pastels on the trinkets. So, I have found that if I shrink these down without spray fixing them, they're just fine. But because it is pastel and that's commonly you spray fix it, whenever I do spray seal something like this type of artwork, I use a workable fixative. That means that the surface still stays with a tooth on it so that I can go in after I've sealed it and add more layers of color. And that's why what pastel people primarily use workable fixative for so they can add more layers. So like if you seal this and then you said, well, I don't like that color. I would like to add a little more purple in it, a little more yellow in it. You can go back over that even if it's been sealed. So about 12 inches apart and just sealing these guys. Okay, and then we let them dry. Okay, now it's time to add some marker. From here on out, I'm just gonna primarily be coloring yeah. the purple set because we color the beads the same for the green in the same style. So I'm going to bring in um, these two beads because they are, they're gonna have marker on them. Dots are, these guys are gonna have markers on them. All these guys are going to have marker color on them. It'll be the same for whether you're doing a green or you're doing the purple. So let's put polka dots all over these little guys. And I don't use Sharpie on trinkets except black and for detailing. And then I use sharpies on the edges of my beads after they've been shrunk. I also use um, on the edges a deco color paint, oil-based paint marker. 
but I really like to use Sharpies for a nice crisp black dot just like this right here. So it doesn't matter. You're gonna if this is your if you're working on the green kit or the purple kit, you're going to be putting dots on this little ivory bead. Markers freak me out because they're so permanent. But did you did you know like if you get Sharpie on your clothes, you just take hairspray and spray it and it'll go away. It just absorbs it. So on this one here, we're putting little dots on these petals. And that's the same for green kit or purple kit. And then on the daisy beads, and I'm doing this all on the frosted side, we're putting dots on the daisies, on the petals. This little design necklace is all about simplicity lack of sheen, just a little bit of sheen in our in our black beads and matte colors, simple beads, a wood bead, just simplicity. Okay, that's all you're going to be doing. So that's the same for um, both green and and purple. There they are. Okay, on to the next step. So I'm going to be going along with the purple design, but I'll tell you everything will be exactly the same for the green. I'll just tell you when it's it, when it's a green bead that will be shrinking. Um, the first thing we're going to do is shrink our simple domed beads. And I want you to place the shiny down in the bowl, in our mold. Get your heat gun out. Heat about an inch away. And when it stops moving, it'll shrivel and wiggle. And when it stops moving, um, then you're ready to dome it. moving the, the gun over so you can kind of see it, but at home you'll be going straight on it in just circular even motion. It's done moving and it's flattened back out. Now you can use either side of the pin, but I'm going to choose the little the fat pin and I'm just going slow and pressing down. Now we will get some weird little ruffles on this. These are going to be have to be sanded off. Shiny down. Coming on down, slowly pressing in. Like I said, the little ruffles have to be sanded off. And there we are. We're going to shrink these guys flat in this box. If you're doing the green mold, it'll be these, I mean the green necklace, it'll be the green ones. Put them in your little container so they don't blow away.
stopped moving on its own accord and it's flattened out. I'm flipping it out and just placing um, something on it so that it cools, I mean, sure that it cools flat. Stop moving on its own accord. And I'm placing something on it so it dries, it cools flat. And you will do that for the green mold, the green for this green bead. Next, we're going to shrink these guys. Okay. And what I want you to do is bring your mold, your, your bead over. And um, you're going to start shrinking it here, but then we're going to put it on this and make sure that it's formed around it. So watch. I'm going to put the frosted side down and I'm shrinking. And I can do this. Count to five. And that should ensure that we have a bead that fits over the top. Okay, we can do the same thing. Whoops, <laughs> you got to put it in the mold, frost it side down. One thousand one, one thousand two, one thousand three, one thousand four, one thousand five. So we've got two little great beads that fit over the top. Next, we're going to continue on that same um, um, theme. And these are going to be shrunk over the top of these. So we're going to put the spotted down. Spots down. Pulling that out and making sure they've got that. Yay! Yay! Adorable. Okay, same thing. Double check, make sure that's formed over there. Yay! So cute. Okay. Now we're going to just shrink these normally with our little doming pin. It's our doming pin. And I'm going frosted, frosted down. <laughs> One thousand one, one thousand two, one thousand three, one thousand four, one thousand five, and this is exactly the same for the green necklace. One thousand one, one thousand two, one thousand three, one thousand four, one thousand five. And then we need four of these guys. 
and these can be kind of temperamental. Sometimes this little thing, the little hole there, will it'll move on the pin and the pin will be really hot and it'll slide across there and open that up. And then it kind of goes back together again. But I gave you five in case something weird happens. So we got to do all of all four of these. And this is the same for your um, green bean. And they cool very fast. so cute. I mean, it's just the slightest little dome that it makes, but it does make a difference between a flat bead. It's just the slightest. You can see if this was flat on here, it'd be so different. A little petal kind of I want him, it, it was leaning towards its friend. So I kind of separated it. Just got our four done. And because I have it right here, I'll do my fifth. Just in case I break one. Okay, that would be the same process for the uh, green. Obviously, those traded out for the green and everything else pretty much the same. Just a wee bit different shades. All right. We're ready to sand. So we're going to sand these guys so they're nice and even and um, all the weird little edges are taken off. And it, yeah, it sounds painful and it isn't fun, but it doesn't take that long. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick and if you feel comfortable, you can do it. Notice how I'm nipping off, saving myself some time on this. You could use a metal file to get some of that extra off too to go faster. Like if I'm nipping with the scissors, obviously I could be risking the, the um, chance of breaking this. But I just wanted to show you if you got some little ripples that you really don't want to spend your time sanding, you can cut them off. These are um, Euro Pro from Euro Tools shears, and I just love them. Okay, that's enough to show you. Now, this is a 150 medium grit sandpaper, and I'm going back and forth, and I'm pressing hard, like hard, not like that. You'll be there forever. And I'm moving it around. As I sand to ensure that I get an even sanding on it. And you need to do this for both beads. Not much more to go. Keep 
keeping sure that I turn it. No, it likes to get stuck. You know, the table's moving. Okay, so see these edges here that are probably still there? They're just very light, thin, and you can bring this around and sand those. Notice I'm sanding like this, not like this. Sanding at an angle inward so that I don't scratch my nice shiny surface. And I want you to do this for both beads till you, you see that they're, the, they're both evenly sanded. I will do this off camera and show you the results. So I've got my little guys sanded. I'm looking at them sideways and I've got nice shapes so they'll, they'll make nice little match pair. And now I'm going to glue three, the, these, these three beads together so they can be, well, it'll be these four all of these together so that they can be curing, drying, um, and then I'll be ready while I work on my little center focus bead, and then they'll be ready to, they'll all be dried when I'm ready to string. So we're going to use E6000, get our Q-tips out, and we're going to glue these guys. Uh-oh. It landed on my pup. Hey, Scooty. Where is it? Oh, it skidded way across the floor. Okay, gotta get down and get it. There we got it. Part of beating, right? How much time do we spend crawling on the floor mm -hmm. looking for stuff? Is everything all centered and going? Yep, yeah. okay. I'm back. Okay, I've got my E6000 open and I've got a, my little needle. I'll show you how we're going to use that out and my Q-tips. And I'm putting this inside and then like kind of let, letting it rub over onto the, onto the edge. And I'm placing that right there. And I'm going to wipe off any excess. I'm hoping there isn't. And I'm going to do the same for the other one. Can you see that? Hoping there's not too much. Get your glue off. Now, um, next, this one goes on. We're just going to put a little on it because the bead string is going to hold this right there. Bead string will hold them all together, but this will keep them from shifting over, like sliding around. It'll keep them nice pivoting. That's the word I want. Just a smidgen on this one. Just a dab. Just to hold it in place. An A6000 is pretty strong glue. I've got those guys on there. Looks like I've got a little glue clean up here. Now this is what the needle's for. I want to make sure that the bead, wow, great, that sent, that went right through there. Where's my hole? There, that they're centered. That, that that when I when they dry that we'll be able to string through them. So I'm going to set those aside to dry and there's the gluing part. And we'll be going on to stringing our center bead. In this step I'm going to show you how to make a wood a uh, uh, four hole bead. So I have these little cute wood beads and I'm going to mark where I want my holes. And then I have a Dremel, and I have a 16th inch drill bit in it. My Dremel's really old and temperamental um, when I turn it on and off. Uh, but I'm used to it, so you'll have to be watching me deal with that. Um, I'm going to keep 
my hand, um, right, I'm going to, this is going to look weird how I'm going to hold this, but at first I'm going to hold it because I want to make little divots here so it doesn't slip and slide all around on me. So I'm going to turn it on and see if I have my hand placed here, it doesn't jiggle around. Doggies got excited hearing that on. Okay, there. Little divots. Okay, I have those divots on. Now I can go in like so and drill all the way through. And there, I have a nice little four hole bead. So next we're ready to create this little focal bead here. And you've seen how I've, I drilled that. I gave you a demo on how to drill those beads. And we're gonna be using fire line. And here it is in your kit. And then get your bead needle out. I like a number 10. Um, so, oh, we don't need to do that. That was just for showing. So I have these wonderful cutters that a student of mine named Judy um, showed me about. And these I ordered from Amazon, and they're just fisherman, fisher line. And I love that it clips. I, I don't get it lost on my desk because I can um, clip it to the handle on my tray. That's really great for cutting the fire line. And this is supposed to be the clear, although it does look white. And I always buy clear, um, because it's supposed to be clear, but it does look white. So I'm going to cut, um, uh, now I guess I'll go ahead and string the whole, we'll see. Let's get this off its card first. We're only going to be stringing, um, two sides. And then two sides. So I am going to cut the fire line in half. I'm going to thread my bead and my needle. And if you feel like it, you can double thread this. I prefer to go through the bead twice. Because what if I have some bead that has this really tiny hole? It can happen, and I can't get through it, and I've double threaded it. So I would rather just go through it twice. So the first thing we're going to do is get our little tiny black onyx faceted bead, and we're going to place it about like so. Okay? And then... We're going to add put the tail through there. So here we are. But there was a smarter way to do that. But I didn't do it the smart way. Now I'm going to come through here find my hole on the other side and I'm going to leave the tail here all right and come up through my other bead grab this adorable little faceted black bead bypass it come back down through the hole over here okay so now I'm here now this is where, and pull this in here snug tight, where I can go double and see if it works. See if it'll go through all these. And I'm going to be pulling as I go along. Keep them snug, bypass the black bead, come up all the way through the other side, bypass the black bead, 
and bypass it, keep things snug, bypass it. Oops, it got, see, these are things that happen in beating, beating land, right? Okay, bypass that, come back down, and through our bead over to where the tail is. Okay, and pull these all snug. Now, if you had double, doubled that up, you would have double the strength, but like I said, now we've got double the strength, but we were sure that we were able to go through all of our beads. You just It's just horrible to have to backtrack when you get some bead it won't go through. So here I did, I tied a knot in it, and now I'm gonna tie another knot, but this is a surgeon's knot. So, cross my bead, come my tail up and around and up and around again pull tight and then I can go a third time surgeon's knot wrapping that tail around the loop several times and coming under there um, that should hold and I could cut it but I like to be double sure so I drop um, some of my super new glue down there and if your favorite beading glue and let that dry just a little bit very quickly and get in here and nip these tails. Now I know you can get really tight. I probably could have gotten tighter but I'm showing how to do it. So I had enough line to do the second bead but we're going to do the, the bead the, ne the, the one the same way and um, I'm stringing on my little faceted bead and putting them on my tail, running my tail, my tail. Back through there. Need more tail. There. <coughs> Bringing it, the needle through here. And there I've got my tail loosely over on that side. <coughs> Yikes, coffee. Coming on up with my other flower bead. Stringing my little onyx bead on, bypassing him, bypassing him and coming back down through to the other side. Coming on up, because I'm going to double over, pulling everything snug as I work. There. Bypass that little black bead. There I'm in, two of them, and I'm in a bypass. I always like to try to go down all at once, but I find I have to go through the bead. Through the bead. Come on, little guy. Through the bead. And there he's doing a bead thing, getting caught on something. That's a sewing thing, too. Coming down through my hole over to my other side, pulling everything tight, coming up, through my hole, bypass my bead, coming down, and if you, if you can go through these as many times as you want to get them tight. More times you go through, the tighter it is. So there we are. We're good doing our surgeon's knot, make our loop, put our tail around the loop and around the loop again, and tying it off nice and tight. Again, loop. This time I'll use my needle to make the loop. Around and around. Pulling tight, I've got two of those, 
I'm going to go in for a third. This time I'm going to take the needle off. Coming around the loop. Around the loop. Quick brown fox runs around the tree. Wasn't it something like that? I don't know. There, we're nice and tight. And we're going to drop a bit of glue on there. Now, you don't have to do the glue thing. So I'm going to call that an option. And come on, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Cutting my tails. Come on. You said you worked so great. There we go, and that is so cute. Now, um, they say it's clear line, but you can do that if it's bugging you. All right, we've got this little guy done. So now we're ready for the fun part, the stringing. And I've laid out my green bead to show you the sequence here. Okay? And I've laid out my purple bead strand to show you the sequence there. The, the differences are going to be is that here, where the yellow bead on the green is, you're going to use an ivory bead. Well, on the purple, you're going to use an ivory bead. And on the purple, you're going to use a black bead where the green bead is. And then where this orange bead is, you're going to use the coral bead. And then bring this over here. Over on this particular example, I used... Uh, a little orange one and on, on, on your kits I'm going to use the little coral one here. So we're going to be looking at this sequence right here. Okay? So where you're green, you're going to do coral. Big bead is always going to be green on this, so just take a note of this. And on the purple one, we're going to do every other one, like this, like so. See the coral, yellow, coral, yellow, coral, yellow. So green people, your green, small orange, ivory, black, ivory, small orange, green, Small orange, ivory, black, small orange, ivory, black, small, ivory, small orange, green. And you're going to use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight green beads. And you're going to end and start with orange ones. There's your sequence. Okay. Of this, you can really see that. And purple people, this is the one I'm going to demo. Okay? So we've got these, our little center beads are dry. We, I mean, our little uh, uh, flanking beads, dome beads are, are dry enough to do our little focal um, four hole bead is done. And we are ready to start. We're going to get our flex wire out. This is the same for green or purple. We have our crimp bead covers, these tiny crimp beads, horseshoe wire guards, obviously this kit's got lots of extras in it, jump rings for a clasp, our clasp. Okay, your kit may have extras in it. Just hope it has everything in it. Sometimes that happens doesn't it, it, something gets missed so I'm going to show you how to use the flex wire make sure we're all nice and centered here we're going to place 
the little horseshoe bead, we're going to run up around here in it and come up down the other side. And then at this end, I'm going to grab my crimp bead, running it way down here, running it down, and I'm going to put it through the tail. There, see? If I need to squeeze these two guys together, I can. I'm using my left hand, so bear with me here. There. Squeeze these two guys together, and I'm up here right snug. Not real snug. Um, just, you can see. Okay? Now, these are, um, get your, if you're going to be doing this, get yourself a nice pair of crimping pliers. I love this brand. It's called Omterra, O M. Capital T A R A. And I'm going to grab the little crimp bead right in there and I'm going to squeeze him. And I'm going to make sure that I'm snug because there's nothing worse than not being snug. Okay? Now that's snug and it's all great. And now I'm going to do something else. I'm going to take the little crimp clamshell crimp bead cover and I'm going to Pac-Man style pretend it, the little crimp bead that I just crimped is a, is a pearl and that the clamshell covers a clam and close it up and I can come in here and make this look just like it's a bead and gives this a really nice polished finish look so we're following this sequence and we're starting from this end down okay so I'm going to start here and so I'm doing small purple and this should be small orange for your green people okay small purple is the same as small um, green and um, orange see right there okay putting that in place and then ivory and black and ivory and small purple this is small orange for your green people and I'm getting my tail in there because that makes it more secure okay so there's your sequence. Now, green people put a green bead on, orange people put a coral bead on. Got it? Green people, green, coral people, purple people, coral. Blah. Purple people, coral. And then repeat this sequence again. I'm putting that purple bead on, which is a green bead for you green people. Ivory bead, a black bead, an ivory bead. And now I'm putting an orange, this, this melanie color on. All right, but you green people are going back to green. You're right there, you're going back to green. You'll be green. Okay, ivory, black, ivory, purple for purple, green for, I mean, purple for purple, and soft orange for orange people. Ivory, black, ivory. Now I'm going to just take a break because I'm using all sorts of vocabulary to here. So here's where we are. See the pattern happening? These would be green. These are your green places, your purple. Whoops, did I forget? I sure did. Oh, so sorry. Purple. Stringing isn't for sissies. Orange.
purple, ivory, black, ivory. There, now let's take a look at this. See where we're, see what we're doing? And just follow this sequence. So I'm just going to be following this sequence. Notice every other one. So the reason I chose to demo the purple one is because the sequence is a little more complex using the every other bead. And if you want to ask me why I had to make that choice is I got this kit all ready to go. Everything all, you know, designed, all that kind of thing. And half the beads ordered and knew, oh, I need more beads. And the manufacturer discontinued. I guess that happens. So I'm not calling out the colors. You can see that the big central bead where it's always green on the green one, it starts to be every other one on the orange one. And that's my sad story. But the fun thing was it gave me um, options with the kits. So it was first the green that were out. And I decided to do a purple kit to go with it too. Because I love the purple and the orange um, colors. Kind of like figs at the latter part of summer with melon. Then figs come into season. So there's my fig. Um, purple and it just was so summery and and I guess the manufacturer thought that these were summery beads and when I went to get more they were gone and I looked everywhere all over the internet for because I wanted this matte look Now just keep following this sequence to green. And as I said, I used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight green beads. I end with the green bead there. And on here, I use one, two, three, four. On the purple, I'm using four of each of the melony color and the, the, the coral. You can stop. What I'm hoping that you'll do is just stop and freeze your your um, your video um, sequence so you can, when it's running, so you can stop and see. We have that technology. And I'm trying to go slow here so that... Um, we can see the pattern developing as I go. So ready for a coral one here. And if you go slow and just keep it laid out like this, you're less likely to make a mistake and have to backtrack. So look, I'm I'm down to my um, my last. I'm right there at the last strand, I mean last bead, and so this one here is where I said, "Oh wow, I'm going to change this up a little bit from what I did here." So I'm going to put an orange one in it's time for an orange and then I'm going to add a coral one so sequence is getting a little different 
I'm going to use the ivory. And these are um, bone beads, so you'll get little divots in them. They're ox bone beads. We're going in with the black, this wonderful little black felted bead. It's not a felted bead, it's a flocked bead. And then capping with this guy. And now we're just going to take a look. Okay, this is your sequence. And for the green one, this is your sequence. So every time you see one of these purple ones, it's a little orange one. And every time you see these guys, it's a big green one. Okay, so this is the more complex. This one's the simpler design. All right, now I'm going to go over here. I've added this, and I'm taking my black O-ring, and I'm bringing this guy on in, and now we have, and we, yay, don't have trouble with our hole because we were careful. All right, I'm looking for my little black beads, and I'm having a terrible feeling that I didn't shrink those down. So let's shrink those now. So get our little mold out, and our pin. So you could have shrunk these earlier, but I forgot, so we're gonna do them now. And what I'm gonna do is put the shiny down in. Okay, shiny in. One thousand one, one thousand two, one thousand three, one thousand four, one thousand five. I love making, I love these. I absolutely love this. These little tattered. This is um, a Tim Holtz uh, mini little stamp. I don't even know if they, it, it, it's a punch. And I don't even know if they make it anymore because it, it isn't, it makes a beautiful little cutout bead, but it, I have, it's already broken on me. So I have to be really careful when I use it. But it's a, I'm going to write this down so you guys can know, a Tim Holtz Sizzix, is it Sizzix? Punch. And I think it's called a Tattered Flower. And it comes big and little. Don't get the big one. The big one's it just it's really hard to punch with. Okay, so, oh, I forgot to dome that. So I'm reheating. I guess you get a lesson in showing that you can reheat. Got sidetracked there. There. Okay, but these are pre-punched in your, in your kit, so. And I don't know if you can get that, that punch anymore. You just have to Google it online and see if you can get a used one or if they still make it. I don't know. So we're coming in here with this little guy here. Um, eBay. It's always a good place to look. This guy. Just adorable. This guy. There. And that's why we were really careful when we glued that because we wanted to make sure that we weren't in a horrible fishing expedition. So I'm going to repeat this way and come to the end. And I'm going to do that probably in fast motion.
Okay, we're at the end, and now I'm going to show you how to do a crimp at the other end. So we add the crimp bead first. There, it's on there. Then we go through with the horseshoe, wire guard, wire protector. Come down. We've got it on there and then come down through the crimp bead and then this is where you can come down through as many beads as you want. I'm going to come down to this coral bead and I love how you can pull like and take my bead collection string and make sure I don't have any gaps. That's the beauty of a wire guard. All right, now I'm going to come in there and crimp that. And these Omter crimpers, a good crimper will have, and, and there's other companies that make it like this, but I just love this simple design. I just have this one loop. I love that I can use this as a plier. And there's little ridges in this that when I crimp the bead, it bites it down into little hills and valleys that, that double secures it. Now I'm going to come in here and nip this wire. I'm not going to use those good wire cutters on the steel. I'm going to come in with my chewing pliers and hope for the best. There. And then snug that tail in there. Okay. Then we get to put the little clamshell cover on it. Oh, we're having a fight. The clams have connected. There we go. That's why I like these. They work like little pliers, too. And I'm coming in here. I'm going to squeeze these together a little bit. Make sure you can get in the clamshell on there nicely. There. And I'm coming down close, and I always go over the top of that. So that looks like a nice little bead on the end of that. And now we're going to open and close our jump rings. So I like a broad nose to grab my, my jump ring like so, and then I can open it. Um, Put it on my wire guard and then on put my clasp on there and close it up nice and snug and then put my same way. Open that up, put it on, put the bar on. And close that up. And there we have it. I'm going to dump these guys out. So we're going to do one last bonus step. I'm going to show you how to use the deco color um, markers on the edge of this. Or you can use the Sharpie. So let's mix this up. I keep a little baby jar food of paint thinner for this. This is oil base. Shake it up really well and then I prefer, I'll, sh uh, I prefer to, I'll show you two ways to put it on. I like to pool it like this and then I can use a tiny paintbrush and I can just paint. I have more control. Okay? Or Now, this takes, this is oil-based, so give it a good hour to dry. And do this after you're all done, because then you can hang your necklace up to dry. And notice how I have control, I don't have to touch the bead. So a little paintbrush, 
or the paint. And I sell these on my site and I've got all sorts of colors and they're just um, they just add a very whimsical touch and being the glossy paint they dry to really pretty finish but poor man's version is the sharpie marker doing it the exact same way so I'm going to hang this where it will dry nicely but that adds a nice little touch to our piece